Welcome to The Friday Habit with Benjamin Manley and Mark Labriola II. The Friday Habit is for creators, entrepreneurs, and agency owners looking for actionable ideas on how to grow their business and be more profitable. We'll pull from our combined knowledge of over 20 years and interview thought leaders that will inspire you and give you the motivation you need to kick your business into high gear. Buckle up. It's Friday. So when it's Friday, it is Friday. It's Friday in Australia. It's six in the morning. Yeah, so it is Friday in Australia, and that voice you heard is actually uh, Matthew Barnett. He's all the way from Sydney, Australia. He's a founder of Verbate and one of my all-time favorite business apps, Bonjoro. So, Matt, welcome to the Friday Habit. Hey guys, awesome to be here. Yeah, super glad to have you. Um, we were just talking about before the show a little bit um, that it's it's snowing in Denver where Mark is, and that sometimes you said it, you sometimes get in Australia with the kangaroos like jumping through the snow and stuff. Yeah, I'm actually so I, I'm actually British originally. I've been here ten years, so it still okay. It still messes with my head when you see kangaroos <laughs> hanging out in the snow. It's something that I think the Australian <laughs> Tourism Board doesn't really talk about winters here. They're like, no, it's it's always summer in Australia. Like, <laughs> That's what I thought. No, it is not. <laughs> it gets cold. That is a rumor. So you you said you're originally from from Britain? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So. Is that where you grew up then? Uh what what part? Grew up in the in the Midlands in the UK in a little um well, the middle of nowhere, somewhere called Shropshire. And then did did my ten year stint in London. And okay. one day I just got over um, well, over everyone being kind of miserable, really. So I, uh, <laughs> you know, it's like I kind of, I thought, where sunny? is it always summer? Where Australia. is it always summer? <laughs> and I came here and then I knew the truth. But yeah, it's the same. There's just kangaroos now. I mean, the kangaroos are pretty good. Yeah, they they uh they do bring a smile to your face. So it's okay. That's awesome. Are, are they just like you're just, you're saying this like you're just driving down the road and there's a kangaroo? Is that, it's is it like that? Yeah, I mean they 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 try to jump in front of your car quite a lot. And they're oh, big. so they're the they're the deer of Australia. <laughs> they are the deer of Australia, and they are like if you get west, the, the big ones they're they're two, two meters, two and a half meters tall. So oh, they're bigger than I'm not a big man. They're bigger than me. They they are more manly than I am, like hands down. <laughs> <laughs> That's scary. Yeah, Matthew, thank you so much for being on our show. Um, you know, we're always interested and curious to interview people who have started a business and have gone through the growing pains of creating something and hiring and firing and developing systems and all those kind of things because uh, it's something that that Ben and I deal with on a daily basis. Uh, and then a lot of our listeners as well, you know, they're in the trenches um, just really trying to uh, do something that uh, enriches their lives and, and the lives of uh, everyone else. So thank you again for being on our show. I think uh, we're going to glean a lot of great, great wisdom from you today. Um, but I mean, really just to kick it off, you know, how did you start Bonjoro? Yeah. So um, like I mentioned to you earlier, earlier it's, um, it was a side hustle. So it was something that we were doing. We had another, another company that was essentially kind of like an agency with tech we're based in Australia, great place to live, not a great place if you want to do global business. So all of our clients that we ended up in those early days were in London, New York, and Paris. So we dealt with large, large FMCG co companies. And so we had this challenge where like, it was okay at first doing kind of drip, drip marketing and drip emails to kind of convert leads. We, we'd always be asleep when they, when they came into our funnel. And that started to lose effect as I think everyone kind of got onto it. And so we're like, look, what else can we do to cut through? We're very good at pitching. We're very good in person. Yeah, this this is how we win business um, in demos and again creative companies. So uh, we started doing videos for everyone that signed up. So I would take a ferry to work, which would just happen to get past the opera house, pretty iconic. So I would pull out my camera on my phone and I would do a video for you know John Archer from Ogilvy who signed up that night. I'd do a bit of research first, so I'd look at what like what he was, what his department was, what, what he worked on. You know, normal sales, you find a thread like, hey, hey, John, I saw you worked on Budweiser. We've done some work with Budweiser too. That's awesome. You know, obviously I'm not in the UK. I'm, I'm here in Sydney. There's the Opera House. I'm on a boat. Good morning. Um, let's talk. And we would send, we would like edit these down, bundle them up, send them off. Um, so it's a very laborious process, but it worked like gold for us. And we, we tripled our response rate that we got from kind of cold leads coming in. So it was definitely a second point on the funnel. It was kind of a conversion tactic. 
Um, and then we ran this for you know, months and months. You know, great for us. We got a lot more more bookings, a lot more business off it. And just ultimately, one of those clients, one of those meetings, said, "Hey, can we use this? Um, can we use this video? This video thing you've got going on?" And I was like, oh, "Okay." And so me and my CTO grabbed a few beers. We grabbed more 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 than a few beers over the weekend, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and we built this thing that they could use. And it was it was all like it was it was pretty awful, but it worked. Um, and then they used it, and then one of their clients was like, "Oh, can we use this too?" And then one of their clients was like, "Oh, can we use this too?" And then it kind of just spread like naturally again not the way we were expecting it to and then it, it ended up overtaking the first business within about 12 months in terms of scale wow wow I, it's interesting because i think that a lot of businesses start out like that you know um i have a lot of friends who started out with doing video photography just as like for the family you know hey i'm gonna do this photo it's like oh you do photos and then you just start doing more and more photos and then all of a sudden you have a business and you know you're you're making money doing something that you enjoy so it's interesting to to hear how this was really just a a way that you solved the problem for your own business that turned into something that other people wanted i feel like ben i feel like you do this a lot too where you you kind of create a system or a process and then it kind of turns into something um, where it's like, hey, I should package this up and sell it. <laughs> hey, that's what this podcast is. The Friday Habit System right. came out of uh, us taking Fridays off a knapsack and working on our own stuff. So, yeah, that's totally true. Uh, Matt, I was just curious: Are you a developer, or like, what role did you play in doing that? Like, are you, do you have a development background, design, sales? Like, what's your background? Yes, I'm actually design background, so not development, but I have a great CTO. So that's, that's awesome. That's his role. <laughs> That's that's always helpful. Yeah, and uh, Bon Georges in general, just your overall design style, just makes me so happy. The yellow and like the bear, you know, whenever a notification comes up, I'm just I feel it's like oh, I got another another lead came in, you know, and it just like the the brand is just so friendly. I just love the whole personality of it. Yeah, I'm a massive fan. And before we get too far away from from this, if if any of our listeners don't know uh, what Bon Georges is, how, how do you distill that down? Uh, to, you know, when someone says, "Hey, what do you do?" Um, What's your answer to that? Yeah, so essentially, it's a personalized video messaging system. Like at its core, exactly the story I said before. If you're using a um, a CRM or a mailing list, in Mailchimp, Squarespace, Shopify, even things like Patreon, whatever you use to collect customer informational leads, we plug into that, and you can set up little what we call triggers that when a customer performs a certain action, they make a Shopify purchase or they or they come in and, and download a white paper um, or they just inquire, then we can ping you a message and say, hey, look, Sarah from Oklahoma just signed up. Um, you know, she's done X, Y, and Z. Why don't you send her a message? And so you can record a message desktop or app and then ping it off to her. And that's it. Hmm. So you said before you started, you know, Bonjour, you were you were doing something else. What was what were you doing? I mean, was that something you started doing right right out of school? Like you graduated university and then you started working a job, or did you, you know, start your own business right out of the gate? Uh, so I did a year in design consultancy in the UK, um, and then fled the country uh, to Australia. <laughs> so I ra- ran away, came here. Um, that's when I started the business over here. So we, to be honest, so we, we did have a tech wing, so we were doing, we were working as a, as a research company, but we were using video. So it was quite early. This was maybe I think it eight years ago. So mobile video had just been launched. So we were, mm-hmm. you know, we were basically getting people to answer questions on video around the world, um, in order to give qualitative research for, um, larger companies so you know for instance Huggies would like interview mothers in India and you know, Rio and and the states of the UK and Australia and get them to film themselves over a week going through their habits of how they you know use and choose and, and, and purchase nappies and they would use that as qualitative research and come overnight so so maybe the one takeaway just the caveat with that is that we understood video mm-hmm. uh, we'd got into it especially mobile video we got into it like too early almost like when, when it was just kind of kicking off so we understood the space you know we un- we were we were very familiar with it we saw how it was growing and so when i think the bonjour thing came along it you know w- i guess we understood the opportunity so it wasn't it wasn't like a fluke it was like we were already in the space we were already kind of subject matter mm-hmm. experts uh, we'd already kind of like been growing a business you know like hacking our way into it so again it, like anyone who's kind of starting off each time you start a business like I will say, I do think it gets easier. 
I do think the lessons you learn do stack up like absolutely and help you get it going faster. Yeah. So when you moved to Australia, did you have friends or like other people there that you knew already and that's why you chose Australia? Or did, were you kind of just bootstrapping it and starting a new adventure? Just winging it. Hey, okay, okay. So the, the real reason I came is because I love surfing and I used to surf off the um, Hebrides in Scotland and I was out one day and it was hailing and I couldn't feel my face or my hands. I came in and I hit on my board on the beach and the hail was so hard it was putting dents in the board. I looked at my mate and I said, stuff this. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so I came to surf. Came here to surf. Um, I don't surf as much anymore because I have a business and a daughter. Uh, so it's, you know, life, <laughs> life gets in the way. And so then when you, when you first started off, I mean, did you run out, like just run into people and, and, you know, kind of before you started Bonjoro, when you were doing your, um, you know, data company or uh, research company, w was that something that you were doing for somebody else or like, how did you, you know, get into that? Um, that started, I went on a date and, uh, the girl I went on a date with was a, uh, a front end designer, a front end developer. We didn't hit it off, but we start, but we start that company. We were both looking to start something. So I think, like, like I, I've always wanted to start a company. It, well, it was always inevitably what I was going to do. So I, I, I already had the mindset. I was looking. I tried a few things back in the UK with um, other design friends. Um, obviously, like the majority of people want to go into like, like at the age of kind of twenty, people want to go go and get jobs and kind of like cruise for a few years. So it's actually quite hard to find entrepreneurs. I think younger. Mm -hmm. As you start to get older, people understand what it is they do and they have the experience. It, it probably gets a little bit easier. So I came here looking, and, and to be honest, if, if you move to a new country, uh, this is my advice: is that it, it's an awesome way to just jump start from scratch because you will meet a cohort of people who've done the same thing. So you know, when I first came here, Sydney's very mu multicultural. I think I've got a couple of Australian friends, a couple of British friends, most of them are French and Swedish and, 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 and Chilean, Argentinian. And if you look at our, look at the kind of tech founder, um, I guess, um, groups here, Ever, like most of the people are from overseas as well because everyone's come over and then everyone started together in the same cohort. We've all met each other. We've all kind of got on and kind of boosted each other along. So if you move country or move city, you have to meet people. And so you do, and you do a much better job of it than if you sit at home. Hmm, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, and plus you have to like dive into a brand new group, and so they know all new people, and you're not just comfortable with people you're used to hanging out with. So it makes a lot of sense. So I'm curious with with so with Bonjour, the way I use use it is I have it hooked up to uh, Squarespace form. I think it goes into HubSpot if I remember right, and then it triggers in the Bonjour app. So it literally pops up on my phone whenever there's a new submission, and I can just tap on the notification and record, and I'll do what you did, which is like research the person a little bit and then send them a quick video. Now, when you do that, uh, do you see like a lot of people using that same way or are there a lot of other creative ways that people are using uh, the app? So there's four points on the customer journey where we get used. So very briefly, the first one, probably the most common um, for people to get started is leads. So inquiries are coming into a form and they're making, and, and, and what they're doing is they're making best first impression. They're saying, look, I'm actually going to stop it's not it's not even about video here which is a weird thing uh, the video is a medium it's amazing for communicating like like, like we're doing this morning um but it's a fact you stop for 30 seconds and acknowledge the customer and just checked in with them so that's where we're being used to and then and the very specifically you're driving them to take their next action so if it's lead you're getting them to book a call or to do xyz um after that a few other places we get used are um we get used in activation so this generally um, applies to online courses and uh, things like software companies, like SaaS companies. So mm -hmm. when you have a customer who comes in and they're already engaged with your software or your course, or your platform, often people start something and, and, and then they just don't kind of get hooked. And so what you're trying to do is to check in after a few, you know, a few days and say, hey, look, I saw you've, you've signed up for the course. I see you've read this, but you haven't gone any further. Did you need help? And the reason is if you don't activate people, they will leave your company. Those are the ones that are most likely to leave and not – not for any other reason than people just get busy. So you try and step in. Then we get used for reactivation. So a good example here is things like gyms. So people who've gone who've gone quiet, people who haven't been around for a while, who you think you're going to leave, checking in, making sure they're good. Again, the personal touch breaks through where other things wouldn't. Um, and then finally, we get used for driving reviews and referrals. So surprisingly, we get used with this a lot in um, e-commerce. Hmm. So after someone's purchased an item, 
wait a couple of days, let it get delivered, and then check in and say, I just want to make sure you've got the item. I want to make sure you're happy with it. So you've got kind of post delivery customer service follow up, which is which is quite mm-hmm. unique. Yeah. And then you're saying, if you are happy, there's a Trustpilot link on this video. Would you mind leaving us a review? And so you're specifically gunning your shop to the top of a category in a review site. And then people also will talk about it. They're like, look, this again, this company cares. Yeah. And there's a lot of like moving, like me, while on e commerce, a lot of e commerce companies now switch to things like sub- subscription models. Um, like the amount of subscription models in e commerce has doubled. So again, like driving people onto repeat purchasing as well. So, yeah. You know, it's all about retention. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, that's that's funny you mentioned that. We did use we have used it that way as well for like right after someone makes a purchase, and that's been awesome because somebody buys one of our website templates. We go on and just record a quick video and say, "Hey, thanks so much for buying this," and they're usually blown away. They're like, "I know I made the right decision because I didn't. I've never had somebody reach out personally like that." Exactly. Yeah. That's awesome. Like, what are some some other ways? I love that, and I think you say something like this on your website. But I love that Bonjoro and your approach um, makes like marketing more personal, even though you're systemizing it. I don't know how you say that, but it's like it's not just m- making an answer from a robot. It's actual human. But because you've you've created this great system, it makes it so easy for you to make a personal message. So, I mean, what's your thought on like systemizing versus keeping things personal and things like that? Yeah. So we have a, we have a tagline for this. Uh, we, okay. So we say um, automate processes, but never relationships. I love that. So I think okay. if you just take that into the way that you work. So I love, I love automation. If I don't need to be doing it, doesn't, doesn't need to have, have me doing it like in person. So the way, the way we think about it is, is where is our time needed in the certain areas of the business? You know, for me, I'm, I'm a product guy, so I'm needed on product development. I'm needed to kind of at the top of the funnel, but, but then we're also a very much customer facing company. So our time is, is better spent like one-to-one with customers because we know that helps us convert and retain more customers rather than, um, you know, our time spent on accounting. So, so what we do is we put process in for the stuff we don't need to be there, but that allows us to spend more time with our users. And again, relationships are everything. Yeah, for us. that makes a lot of sense. What are some other ways that you've seen businesses like implement more personalized marketing other than like sending videos and stuff like that? Things like gifts or like, what are some other things you've seen that seem to work? Yeah, so a few things here. Um, I think, so, so one thing I'll say which is a bit different is I think, I think on your support front. So I, I see support as a growth channel and any company that doesn't like have a good look at it again. Um, I think the way that you do support with users online, on tickets, anything else, um, if you can go over the top here a little bit, it really helps. Um, so for instance, we, we are a global company and we make sure that we have support online 24 seven and we have done from day one, even as a small team. Um, so we have live people to talk to, we don't do tickets. The guys are there, they'll mess around, they'll have fun, they'll try and get people to laugh. Um, and they'll spend time with with anyone. It doesn't matter if they're a free user or a paid user, like it doesn't matter to us. We treat everyone the same. I know Zapier does this really well as well. Zapier have a like all hands um day a month where even the CEO gets on support as well. And so, you know, you're chatting away and suddenly you're like, Oh, you're the you're the CTO of Zapier. He's like, Yeah, yeah, how can I help? <laughs> um <laughs> So, so a little bit, a little bit different there. I think um, there's other things. So we do another thing where we send out bear suits to, um, to to customers at certain points when they hit certain, I guess, kind of points on the journey. We do it when you send a certain number of videos. Uh, nice. We do it. We either send a bear suit to the, to the individual, or we offer them like kids bear suits for the, for the kids, which works really well and, <laughs> and kind of gets it. Literally gets them wearing our brands. <laughs> like I'm just yeah, these back and they're like brilliant i love it yeah, it's and fun it's, and it's fun and that aligns with our brands so i'm not saying you just go and send out swag but if it's something personal to you like, like, like well, we've tried sending honey before the birthday we've tried all these different things so things that make people smile it doesn't have to be expensive um it goes a long way obviously like handwritten postcards like are pretty cool if it makes sense for your brand little personal touches um i think as well just just generally checking in on customers obviously a bit of news about the customer check in like again in, in person um all these little things like like think about think about brands that you remember because of their team and because of the experience mm-hmm. it's probably, probably it's probably in smaller companies big a lot of larger corporates are not so great at this like, like, like let's face it mm-hmm. um yeah I, I like i wrote an article a while ago where we're like we use maybe like 120 different services 
in in the company like like it escalates pretty quickly and some of those we pay a lot of money to and the ones that we love are there's maybe like five of them wow. and they're and they're all ones where the team has like made us chuckle checks in with us randomly you know like just just, just stuff that's not expected oh, 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 so go, go back to the process piece mm-hmm. and here's the key yeah like random and unexpected and the whole idea of delight like is a process so with our bear suits you know people don't know they're coming but they hit a certain point that we have a trigger that fires over to you know my head of delight and she goes okay jim needs a bear suit um jim again there's not a specific time period or anything else that comes in with that there's a few triggers after hit so he's not expecting it so when he gets it, he's like this is totally unexpected with us it's very expected because it's part of the process right that is beautiful. I love that so much. And, you know, I, I can attest firsthand when you say like support, that's really interesting. Uh, I think you said support is a growth opportunity or something like that. Um, that makes so much sense because I think a lot of people, once they've gotten a customer, like, okay, I've got that customer. Let me go out and hunt new customers. But all the people that are already your customers are the easiest customers to, it's way, you know, it's way more expensive to find a new customer than to keep an existing customer basically. And you already have an existing relationship with them. And once you're they're paying you, they're going to want to pay. They're more likely to pay you more for another service later. So I love that. And I will also say uh, my experience, the, the whole reason we're even on, on this podcast and why I connected with you was I was, I was in Bonjoro on my desktop computer. I was just looking around and looking at some of my stats or something. Got a message from Amy on your team. It was probably an automated initial message that was like, hey, do you have any feedback for us? Any ideas for improvement? And I just like wrote in a thing, like a, a feature that'd be cool to have it on the mobile app or something. And then Amy, I believe it was Amy, wrote me right back and was like, oh, thanks for your, your uh, feedback. And I was like, hey, by the way, I'm a huge fan. Thanks for all the work you all do. And and, she, and like I talk about you guys all the time on my podcast. And Amy <laughs> writes back like, oh, well, let us give you a shout out on social media and we'll plug your podcast. Like what? I'm talking, I thought I was talking to a support person. What's happening? And then, you know, she's like, hey, we'll give you a shout out. And I was like, wow, okay. And then I think I might have mentioned something like, hey, you know, I'd love to, inter- you know, if it's even possible, if your founder ever, you know, does, you know, interviews or anything, I'd love to talk to him about, about what you do. And she was like, sure, I'll connect you. And so she just connected us via email. I was like, that was probably the most crazy support experience I've had where I was like, oh, I can talk to the founder on a podcast now? Okay. Like that was just beautiful. I think that that is really a good yeah. example of your culture. It's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so a- Amy's official title is uh, Chief Delight Officer. So I'm kind of <laughs> like, I'm kind of like, whatever you have to do, you just you just go and do it. Like it's you know, you don't need to ask. Just whatever it takes. And obviously, she's all the personality that is awesome with that. And then Johan, we have so Amy's in London, like Johan's in in South Africa. Grant's here, so our team is like super all over the place. But ev- but everyone we hire, like we always we always hire. It's always like hiring early, like culture first. It's num- number one thing for us. And if you do it, you do it correctly. Like this, this is not stuff that's hard to do. And this is a great thing that something that gets me about like bad support. Like to, I'm going to have a bit of a rant here, but like, yeah, go for it. It is easy. Like it's easy. I just like be yourself, have some fun. You know, you're going to get things wrong. You're going to make mistakes. Like, ter- like if, if someone comes in with an issue and you successfully like solve that for them and, and communicate well and let, and let them know there, that's actually where your advocates come from here because because if someone's a happy customer and they never interact with your team, they're like, doodly doodly, off we go. Um, <laughs> they they never become an advocate necessarily. And by an advocate, I mean like like a raving super fan, like yeah, you know, where they will go and talk about you. Because they haven't interacted with you, then they don't necessarily get that extra delivery. Like, it's quite hard to break that. When they have an issue and you just like nail it, they're like, this is awesome. Because that's quite rare in the market. So, you know, support as a growth lever is easy because m- most people don't do it well. And most people do not go above and beyond. So if you do that, and small companies can do this because you will have the time to do it when you get started. Trust me, like it's 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 unique. It is not the norm, and so it's an easy way to stand out. It's not a lot of investment, I don't think, for the payback it, it gives. All right, we're going to cut it off right there. You're going to have to come back next week to listen to the remainder of this episode. But hey, until then, go to thefridayhabit.com where you can find show notes for this episode. There you can also find links to our websites and ways to get in touch. And at the bottom of that page, you can download our guide to the Friday Habit System that will show you how to set aside one full day each week dedicated to working on your business instead of in your business. And if you've enjoyed this episode and other episodes, please leave us a review and rate the show. It helps us get the word out and reach more people. And as always, live every day like it's Friday. Friday.